the law. More than just Ten Commandments. The law includes a lot more than just the Ten Commandments. The law is all of God's instruction, all of God's expectations, all of the orders that God sets the whole universe into. The law includes uh, gravity, for instance, and, and uh, how electromagnetism works in the world, and why the wind blows, and how uh, the sun shines, and all that kind of That's all part of God's law. It's all a part of God's order in the earth. Why do we even have God's law? Why are there Ten Commandments? Why is that even important? Why don't, doesn't God just let us do whatever we want to do? Why did God give us the law? Well, there are three big reasons. Three uses, in fact. And that's what I'm going to explain next. The three uses, or the three reasons, that God gave us the law. The first use of the law, let's talk about that. The first use of the law, the primary use of the law, is to promote the good, and restrict evil. Promote what God wants in the world to build up all the goodness in life. So think about it. This is this is like um, uh, God says, love your neighbor. Do good to them. That's a good law. People feel good when you're kind to each other, when people are kind to you. Right? That's a good use of the law. That's what God wants. That's the first use. Building up good. And also restraining evil. Restraining all the bad things. Stopping you from doing things like murdering and stealing and betraying your friends. Those are, that's the first use of law. To promote good things and to stop evil things from happening. Why did God even give us a law to begin with? Why did God even give us instructions? Well, the big reason is, is because God loves you. God wants you to have a full and abundant life and he wants everybody else on the earth, in fact, all of creation to have a full and abundant life as well. And the law helps us to do that. The law is all about giving us a good life. If everybody thought it was okay to go around stealing things from everybody else, we'd all suffer. If everybody thought it was okay to go around and just murder whoever they had an argument with, we'd all suffer. But as it is, God gave us a law telling us not to do those things. In fact, God put that law in everyone's heart. Uh, people who don't even know God, our God, who created the heavens and the earth, people who don't know Jesus Christ, even they know kind of the fundamentals of God's law. God put it into the very fabric of the world, as it were. In fact, in Romans, the first chapter, St. Paul talks about how people from all over the world, wherever culture they're from, kind of know this law in their heart. And the interesting thing about that law is that that law includes all of our modern day laws as well. It's not just uh, the Ten Commandments or the things in the Bible. The first use of the law includes things like the speed limit or food safety laws. Because, let's face it, if you went to restaurants and they weren't uh, following the food safety laws and you got salmonella, that would be pretty bad. You wouldn't like that. So God puts in place these laws, even using our government and our uh, municipalities of today, to help protect us from evil, like diseases and things like that, to keep us safe, to promote life. So that's the first use of the law. The second use of the law is uh, one that we don't always think about because it involves our internal feelings, uh, how we feel inside. The second use of the law is where we see how good God's world is and how good God's instructions are and how good God wants us to behave, loving God, loving our neighbor, uh, living up to expectations. And when, we, and when we see how good it is, 
we realize we don't measure up. We realize that this is where God's law says we should be, and we're always following short. And we feel stuck. We feel like, whoa, I don't measure up. What am I supposed to do? And so we feel bad, and we turn to God, and we say, God, we need help. God, I need you to forgive me for not measuring up to your law. God, I need you to forgive me for failing to follow your words. That's the second use of the law. The second use of the law shows us that we need God and we need God's help and that we can't do it without God. Whenever we fail at something, whether it's one of the Ten Commandments or something else, and we realize that we're not perfect and that we need God, that's when God is using uh, the second use of the law to remind us uh, we're human and not God and that we need God's help. And we need God's forgiveness, we need God's grace, and we need God's love. That's the second use of the law. Let's talk about the law and going to hell. Some of you might think, well, all I gotta do is follow God's law and I'm home free. But if you think about it for a second, and you really look deep inside, and you ask your siblings or your parents, they're gonna tell you that it's impossible. You've never actually ever done everything that God requires of you, ever. So what's left for you and me and everyone then, since we can't follow the Ten Commandments completely? Well, when we hold ourselves up to them and we say, oh yes, I, can't, I cannot follow the Ten Commandments completely. I can't follow God's law completely. The only thing we have left is to go, wow, I need God. I need forgiveness. The only way that I will be saved at all is if I have God in my life. That's the second use of the law. The law, the Ten Commandments, it reminds us that we're not perfect, that we can't do everything ourselves, that we need God, that we ourselves are not God, that our eternal destiny, whether we go to heaven or hell, ultimately isn't even in our hands. It's in God's hands. And that we have to entrust ourselves into God's hands. So, do good people go to heaven and bad people go to hell? Is that how it works? Is there justice in this world? Well, if there were true justice, if everyone got what they deserved, we'd all go to hell. We'd all be damned for all eternity because that's what we all deserve. Fortunately for us and for all of creation, God sent His Son Jesus so that those who believe in Him and trust in Him would be forgiven. God forgives us our sins. That's what it means for Jesus to have died on the cross, was that the law would not be held against us anymore, but rather we would be judged according to God's mercy and God's forgiveness. So ultimately, bad people can go to heaven. Isn't that wonderful? Because that means there's hope for you and me. Otherwise, we'd have no hope. Otherwise, I'd be, uh, I'd be stuck. But as it is, because Christ died and was raised up, I have hope to go to heaven and be raised up too. And so do you. And so does even Adolf Hitler, if he believed in Jesus. I know, it's pretty crazy to think about, but God's forgiveness is big enough to even forgive him if he were to trust in Jesus and ask for God's forgiveness. That's the key. Throwing yourself at God's mercy. For those of people who don't, well, God's judgment awaits. But for those who do, God's forgiveness uh, knows no bounds. The third use of the law is a particular use uh, where people uh, you and I, we, we were baptized and the Holy Spirit said, all right, you baptized person, I'm claiming you to be mine. So we become God's children at baptism. And at that point, the Holy Spirit begins working on our hearts and in our minds and in our souls. And so we go out into the world not wanting to avoid evil just because we're trying to not get caught or we don't want to do the good thing just because it feels good for ourselves. We begin to want to do the good thing, the right thing, out of love for God and out of love for our neighbor. That's the third use of the law. 
is when we start looking to God's commandments and God's instructions out of love for other people and out of love for God. Not because of our own desires to avoid punishment or to get rewards. When we're motivated out of, uh, out of compassion, when we're motivated out of love for our neighbors, that's where the third use of the law comes in because that's saying, here's a good way to love your neighbor. Here's a good way to love God. That's the third use of the law. Let me give you a good example. In the scripture, Jesus says, welcome these little ones. He says, whoever welcomes a little child, and he actually, in the story, he actually brings a little child into his midst. Whoever welcomes a little child is uh, welcoming me, Jesus says. And welcoming not even me, welcoming the one who sent me, meaning God our Father in heaven, the one who created us. And so, we're thinking to ourselves, I want to serve God, I want to love my neighbor, how can I do that? Well, the third use of the law is where we look into Scripture, we look into God's instruction, and we say, yes, I want to follow God, I'm going to welcome little people into my midst. I'm going to look for uh, people who are outcasts, I'm going to look for people who need a friend, and I'm going to find them, and I'm going to be kind to them, and welcome them, and be a friend to that person. That's the third use of the law. When you do that out of love for God, and out of love for other people in your lives. So those are three uses. Number one, to build up life and restrain evil. Number two, to remind us that we're not perfect, that we're not gods ourselves and that we need God. And number three, to show us how to act uh, in a good way towards God and towards one another. So, the law is a little bit bigger than just thou shalt not. So we have this law. so that we can enjoy this creation. And we follow the law because it benefits us and it benefits other people. But more deeply we follow the law because we know God loves us through Jesus. We know that God loves us and forgives us. And so in response, we follow the law as like a big thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for giving me a new life. I want to do what you told me. I want to live a good life. I want to love other people. And so we follow the law in order to do that. That's why we have the law. It's not about heaven or hell. It's about right here and right now. It's about loving God and loving your neighbor today, tomorrow, the next day, at school, at home, wherever you go. That's what it's really about. Heaven and hell has been taken care of through Jesus Christ. Well, there you have it, folks. The reason we have those Ten Commandments and all the other laws, too. Don't forget to fill out your responses online, and I look forward to seeing you in class for our very first uh, new and improved catechism session here in uh, church on Sunday morning at 9.45. Don't be late because we start right on time, and I don't want you to miss any of the awesome activities that we'll be doing. Uh, you can stay tuned for our next video, which will be out uh, the same Sunday as our first class. The procedure will be that you will get the videos one week before the class. Hopefully you'll watch it before then, fill it out, uh, fill out the responses, and then we'll see you back in class to discuss it and do some fun stuff talking about God's law. Talk to you soon. Look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Since I was a young kid.